Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. How's everybody doing today? It's good to see all your smiley faces from all around the world. We reach a global audience. This is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series where we have a lot of fun. We engage our audience. We learn about uh, different things about ourselves because the show is very inspiring. We have lots of levity and our famous JMS Lovity. Yeah, that's levity and love put together. And we have done over 600 or so episodes, just about seven days a week live of our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Guests coming in from all around the world, celebrity friends and guests, folks from Broadway, Hollywood, television, film, music, stage, culinary arts, sports, you name it. And we always love when you guys watch, whether you're watching live right now, or you're watching this in the replay in the archives, which you can find right here on our YouTube channel, Gym Masters TV. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Show it some lovity. Subscribe and click that notification bell so you never miss any of the episodes. Our live special series of uh, the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series. Also, our on-location episodes that we do on the road and so much more. Great guests coming in from Los Angeles, California. And we're very excited because at the time of this live show, this is literally on the heels of him appearing on CBS this Sunday on NCIS Los Angeles. Yes, I'm talking Nathan Butler. He graduated from the prestigious National Institute of Dramatic Art in Sydney and uh, past alumni who also did Mel Gibson, Kate Blanchett, Tony Collette. Born and raised on a ranch in the outback of Australia, he's actually putting together a film in relation to that. I'm going to talk about that. Nathan Butler left home in 2008 to pursue his career as an actor, best known for his portrayal of Dr. Ewan Keenan in the Emmy Award-winning soap opera series, General Hospital on ABC. Also as Nick Town in Hawaii Five-0. Nathan uh, has starred in HBO's Westworld and has and a series regular on Winners and Losers, recurring roles on Hulu series Casual, ABC's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., HBO's The Pacific, and of course, as I mentioned, season 13 of NCIS, which is really, really, really exciting. And again, uh, if you're watching this, you know, six months from now, as opposed to watching it live, you'll be able to see that uh, in re-airs as well. Again, that is this Sunday. It's really, really exciting. And that's just a short list of the incredible things that he's doing. He's so busy. He's so in demand and uh, he's a cool guy. And matter of fact, I love the location where he is at. <laughs> he is at his home there in Los Angeles, California with a stunning background of blue skies and so much more. And, you know, we just came back from our family vacation in warm and sunny Florida, swimming in the ocean. I think he said he just came out of the ocean 10 minutes ago just for the our show. That's a real trooper. And there he is. <laughs> hey, Nathan, welcome. You had time for the hair to dry off a little bit, huh? I did, just in time <laughs> for the show. Actually, got... literally at the beach with my daughter and yeah. son, Jetson and yeah. Cora, and it was 70 degrees and I was swimming. People were looking at me as if I was crazy because I was swimming in the, you know, 40, probably 40 degree water. But dude, I yeah. love it. Like, get hey. in there, you know? Yeah, absolutely um, right. <laughs> yeah, we, we I got a little look... sunburn. Getting sunburned in January is, is you know, I don't it's, know what that good. is. Global I something, still something. have some remnants from the Florida Christmas uh, New Year's situation as well. I think if people are tuning in right now, they're saying, are those two cousins? Uh, we sort of look airwise <laughs> like we are related a little bit here, huh? <laughs> yeah, we got that. We got that COVID uh, haircut or, you know, we lack thereof. We got that pandemic look exactly, but it's kind of cool, right? I mean, you've done work with that hairstyle, and uh, I think it looks great on you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's worked for me, Jim. You know, yeah, yeah it's uh, it has, yeah, it's worked. You know, I, I literally grew it out for the, for the pandemic, and yeah, it's it's landed me a couple of roles, and you know, I, I feel like it's gonna, I feel like it's gonna keep going. I was going to say, that's what's kind of happened with me as well. I've worn this on, you know, network television and elsewhere. And everybody's like, hey, we like it. Why don't you keep it? And now some of our viewers that are here that watch from all around the world, we call them the Lovities, the Gym Master Show Lovities, because I said light love and levity too fast 
last year on the <laughs> show and I came out with the word levity and then the audience fell in love with the word. So they're the levity squad. They call me Mr. Levity. This is Levity Hall. You're now a levity on the Gym Masters show live, which is really cool. But some of them uh, are like, do not cut that hair. We will not allow you to cut that hair. You got to keep it. Um, you find that the case too? Do you have some that are like, oh, we want the short hair on you and others are like, keep that the long locks we love that as well yeah i get it now i kind of i don't go on social media so much for this kind of reason is when i you know people comment like you know cut your hair get a haircut you need a haircut like you look like a bum you look i'm like <laughs> whatever whatever man i love it i'm enjoying it i'm gonna i really want to grow my hair out like once in my life you know, yeah, and that's I never... exactly what I did. I've right? never been able to do it with the work that I've always done to get away with letting it go. And it was a little bit longer and it's, it was brought up just a little bit, but, uh, I'm like, you know, and a friend of mine, he, um, he's African-American and he did some dreadlocks that he would never have done. He always had very short coiffed hair and he was talking to his wife and he said, what do you think? We're in a pandemic. What should I do it? She, she says, you know, at this point, we're in a pandemic. Do what makes you feel good. If it's something you've always wanted to do, just do it and try it. And he's done it and they all love it. <laughs> so, hey, yeah, keep it, keep it going. Keep that's it growing. exactly. <laughs> hey, congratulations. You know, we're live right now. So people watch this now as they are watching live. We welcome all of our JMS loveties. We'll check in some of the comments coming in as well from everybody. But uh, NCIS Los Angeles this Sunday. Very, very cool. Tell us a little about that. That's uh, sort of breaking news maybe for some of our viewers here. Congrats on that. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be an awesome episode. It's going to be an awesome episode. It's called the land of wolves and you're in for a you're in for a nice one you're in for a standout episode i think it's nice like when i first read it i was like this episode it feels like it kind of stands nicely on its own as a little story with a really nice arc and i'm gonna i'm gonna scare you in that episode i'm gonna blow your mind it's gonna be yeah it's gonna be a good one that is really really cool uh where was the setting where did you film that particular episode uh, we were filming uh, out just outside of uh, LA in Santa Clarita. It was supposed to be um, kind of the Mexicali, kind of the Mexican border in the desert. So um, it's uh, a lot of fun, ATVs and and dust and dirt and grit and and. Uh, Is some of it here? There you go. There's a little bit yes. there. Me and the boys getting. Uh, so which one's dust? Which one's dirt? And which one's grit in that, that picture? <laughs> right <laughs> sort of uh exchange it right that's funny um yeah. so that's cool yeah so uh what was the weather like temperatures and everything was it cooperative for you yeah we actually got some cooperative some really cooperative weather weather and well you know it was kind of a mix because i i actually kind of decided to go as me and mr mr cool jay um, yes, LL Cool J. Yeah, cool working with him, huh? Mr. J. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, it was it was fun work with him. Actually, what, I'll cut to a story of that and then go back to whether um, uh, Jay was he was coming down the hill to to do this bit where he kind of comes in and you know does his does his scene and he was um, I don't want to give much away but he comes in to do his scene. That's I feel like that's not giving too much away. And then uh, there was like this poison ivy on the ground that. He was kind of stepping through and i don't know maybe no one kind of noticed but i did you know being a kind of outdoors you know a bit of a bushman a bit of an outback man i, I noticed the i mean i said i said hello cool i said man just just be careful you know like when you take your boots off later you might want to you know you might want to use some gloves or something because you're standing in um poison ivy and uh. I said, man, man. He was like looking down and he was like thanks nate he's like dude that would have been, you know, and also be careful you know, not to put your hands anywhere near your, you know, family jewels because that would be really bad. And he laughed, you know. That could be but, uh, a little bit of a problem, <laughs> right? Was, I was like, that would be a disaster. Um, oh, my God. But anyway, he, uh, he heeded the warning and was pretty grateful. <laughs> ah, that's really, really cool. But, yeah, getting a chance to work with him and, and everybody, some more couple of shots here. Tell us about this one, Nathan. 
Yeah, as me and Danny. Look, she's so lovely. Everyone's so lovely on the show. It feels like such a, you know, a great bunch of people um, who are very like welcoming. Hello, everyone tuning in. It's exciting to have. Evan Lee oh. says, I'll say it once. I do fancy guys with long hair. So this is a double treat for me. So awesome. Heaven Lee, what a great name. Heaven Lee. That is a beautiful is, name. Is, yeah, I never tell you. Uh, one of our loveties here. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> Juanita uh, in South Africa says, the pandemic meme looking good, guys. <laughs> I like that. We, we love that. And Merlin in Canada says, welcome. Uh, you are now a lovity. Uh, and she typed bathing instead of Nathan. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Uh, that's okay. I say, yeah, I was going to say bathing. <laughs> bathing. Is that I a probably, I probably, flip? Is she giving us a message here? Or? I probably, yeah, I probably need a bath after uh, being, at the, being, the, being at the beach all day. Just, um, I was going to say, just dive back in the ocean. Here's a cool there shot. There you go. Too. Yeah, I must say I must say I was very dirty in this in this show and and yeah. go to the kind of the weather question is that I I kind of went and which I like to do especially with villain characters I like yeah. to um I like to go method you know and it's my own my own kind of take on method and um I was I was camping out there like where we were shooting um and I was shooting there for for the week I was camping up on the up on the mountains near set so you know in the night i was out there you know just getting into it and you know, i'd come back in the morning and the makeup ladies loved me because they didn't have to do any makeup i had already all the dirt and grime you had it all over right. me and my yeah. hands were filthy and i smelt you know and um for me it's you know i didn't have to act when i rolled onto set it was just like you know i'm already this guy you know yeah and, you're you're already ready to go and you got the whole Right, the whole yeah, thing. I'm already in it and going, and as other actors are looking at their sides and like, you know, looking at their lines, I'm like, dude, I'm, I'm this guy. I don't need any of that, you know. And I kind of, I kind of spoke to the, you know, the director and producers and the writers in the beginning, and I said, it's, you know, this is what I'm gonna do, and mm -hmm. you know, just, just kind of like, a, be warned, you know, I'm not gonna be Nathan so much, so I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna be Kodiak. Hey, the way I play, you're gonna so. be. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, this is really cool. I mean, that's a beloved series, but you have been a part of lots of great shows. I mean, the series General Hospital, of course, we know so well. Who's the guy? good looking guy wow. there? Wow. Yeah, baby face. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Playing the doc. Yes. And uh, the doctor's in the house. What was it like being on General Hospital? I mean, obviously that you know, soap fans are very, very diligent. They follow, they love it. They, you know, they can, they know every move you're making. Sometimes they want you with that person. Sometimes they want you to divorce that person. They don't want you to take that job. They know everything about the characters. Uh, right. and they're very in invested. Um, we've had several soap opera, uh, soap opera actors on this series here, and they've all mentioned how dedicated the fans are. How about for you, the experience of being on General Hospital? What was that like for you, Nathan? Yeah, like, it, was, it was awesome. You know, like, it was really like a way to get my, get my feet wet in LA, in America, you know, get my, you know, get, get my chops, my acting chops, you know, really up to par. Because, you know, you're learning, you know, so much dialogue. We were doing an episode a day when I started on the show. And then by the end of it, when my, my character was kind of wrapping up, I was doing, we were doing almost two episodes a day. Well, we were doing two episodes a day. So it was anywhere from, you know, 20 to 45 pages of dialogue that me, myself, and every other actor would have to memorize and, you know, and, uh, so that was a, yeah, that was great. And the fans, like, the fans are awesome. You know, the fans are the uh, are the reason why you do the show. You right. Know? Like they, they're right. everything. You know, when you have those fan club weekends, I learned so much about the show through the fans, you know, and and that's and that's that's everything. You know, the fans are everything. So, you know, kudos to them. And, and I love them. I loved meeting them all. And I still have fans, you know, now that have, that have you know, keep in touch. And, oh, yeah. and it's cool. It's really, it's a really nice part of it. 
You know, I know a lot of folks, especially uh, a lot of the gang that used to be on ER, which was such a medically driven TV series, they had to really study the medical jargon and really know what it was they were saying in some of those real medical scientific terms. How about for you uh, with the soap opera? Did you have to learn some medical jargon uh, that might have been in the script as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I was I was playing a psychiatrist, and there was some there was a few scenes where I had to say some some quite like you know hypnotic lines that were tongue twister yeah. kind of lines, you know, that were yeah that was was a challenge. But you know they would have medical professionals on set and stuff that would help you through that if you uh, if you needed it. So so that was yeah that was a challenge, but uh, you know yeah. nothing nothing out of the ordinary. Um, but yeah, take, was, yeah, take two aspirin and call me in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> right. the old, you, uh, you left Australia around 2008 to really, you know, full on pursue your career and heading to the States. What was that like for you leaving home, you know, home and hearth and family and, and everything there to make that plunge you know it's a big plunge it's miles away and you've got the security of family and loved ones there but you knew in your heart and your soul you wanted to really take this on what was that like for you deciding you know i think we're going to head uh, to the states and really make this a full-time situation uh yeah jim look it's a it's always a, it's always a risk you know um but i always say you know you got to risk it for the biscuit and uh, right. I was a yeah, I was a kid. I was twenty, you know, twenty one when I moved here, and uh, it was daunting. It was hard. I was on my own. I was you know, pretty much fresh out of drama school, and um, and I also kind of went. Uh, I moved here against my agent's best wishes. They were like, you should work here more and build a bit of a profile before you go. And in hindsight, maybe they were right because yeah. when I got here, it was. It wasn't that easy. Like I had to, right. I had to hustle, and I had to. I ended up getting a job at like a camera rental house. I ended up, ended up basically becoming a cinematographer, where I was, you know, I was like a second unit DP on this film. The couple of films in Africa that I shot, and I ended up becoming behind the scenes, and doing a lot of camera work. And then it was almost like three or four years into being here and not having booked an acting job. Mind you, I was like on these visas that were kind of not really legitimate visas like i was kind of you know i was i was here kind of on false pretense a little bit and i had to in order to book a job i had to pretty much book a series regular role in order for the company to sponsor you because right. they're not going to sponsor you just for a guest star or a co-star like a small role you need to right. so you know and four years into it in hospital that was that was the role you know dr mm. ewan keenan was the was the series regular role that got me across the line and it got me, you know, it got me my visa and my setup here and it, it got me, you know, it got me established. It gave me the opportunity. And that's why I'm so grateful too for, for, you know, for ABC, Disney and, you know, that, you know, that company is the, you know, gave me a shot to, you know, get myself, get myself based in America, get myself, you know, a home base here. And, you know, then after that, after being on the show's show for a couple of years, I got married, had kids, and it kind of, you know, it blossomed into this life that I've now created for myself in, in the States. And just six months ago, I became an American citizen. And Congratulations. Thank Welcome. You. So, you know, now I'm a proud, I'm a proud, proud citizen. And, and yeah, you know, I think it's from, from here, it's just going to keep getting, you know, bigger and better and, and more fun and more things to explore and more life to, you know, more life to live. That is absolutely cool. Congratulations on that. Oh, that's very exciting. Are you able to have, does Australia let you have dual citizenship when it you does. do? Good. Because I know mm -hmm. some countries have a friend from the Netherlands and they, if they were to become American citizen, they have to give up the Dutch citizenry and they're sort of torn because they want sort of dual. So that's right. good that they do that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you've had this up, these opportunities coming your way, which has been great. And they're very, you know, well-earned, but going back, rewinding a little bit, you grew up on a cattle ranch, huh? Or, or was it on a boat with pirates? <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. 
I do my research. <laughs> you did your research? Actually, I was, you know, actually coming into this, I was going to tell you another story. <laughs> Go ahead, tell it. We would love it. What, uh, you know, so we got you another pirates, story. we got a cattle ranch, but really it was what? <laughs> but now, but <laughs> now. a banana you know, tree in Hawaii or something? Uh, <laughs> or a coconut tree? <laughs> I was going to, you know, I was going to tell a story of growing up in Africa. Um, <laughs> Yeah. So we grew gonna, up in Africa. Yeah. And then I was gonna start speaking, you know, I was gonna I was gonna start speaking a whole other language. I was gonna start speaking a little bit of Mwasa and you know <laughs> but well, there you go. I we uh, learned did, on this show that research. yes, in African Moy loop means walk well in African. See, so we know. So that African walk story well. might fly. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I love Africa. I have actually a soft spot in my heart. Uh, and a fondness for Africa. I've spent, I spent like six months there and yeah. I love it, man. I just, it's like, the, I love the culture. I love the people. I love, you know, just you know, like walking from a one village to the next village and you have a person, a, a man, another man, he's holding my hand, straight man, holding my hand. We're walking straight to another man. village together, miles. And that's just like a part of their custom and culture. Yeah. And it, it just feels, it's beautiful. You know, it has this beauty to it and it has a, I don't know, man, it's a, it's, people are just happy there. You know, I'm, you're, I'm in a village and there's like, there's no running power or water. They don't have, you know, all these amazing facilities and amenities and grocery stores and things we have here, but they are, these people are so happy. They're yeah. so like intrinsically happy and Intent. that was cool. Yeah. Being there, they're content, and being there, and be part of that. Of the time that I that I got there was cool, and I want to go back. You know, I want to take my kids back and sure and, uh, show them that world, and yeah, and make it an adventure, right? Absolutely, an adventure, man. It's a safari. So it really yeah. was not Africa or the pirate ship, but it was the cattle ranch <laughs> in uh, in Australia, right, Queensland? Uh, tell us about that. Ranch. Yeah, yeah tell us about that. Yeah, I grew up in a cattle ranch in Australia in a time when it was kind of like just on the cusp of when, you know, Australia's like, Australia's kind of like the, like America was in the 1880s, you know, it was kind of like the Wild West. And I was growing up in that world as a kid. And, you know, there's indigenous tribes living in the river by our house. You know, I got to go hunting with them. And like, I had a a rifle like a 22 like single shot rifle this old like rusted barreled rifle and i'd trade them my rifle and they'd give me a spear or a boomerang and we'd go hunting and i mean just the just growing up there was incredible riding horses mm -hmm. and motorbikes and jumping out of helicopters into rivers and i mean it was it was awesome man you know yeah. and i miss it and being a you dual do. citizen now like we're gonna start going back more and i really want to try to spend you know like maybe six months of the year in australia and six months of the year and because i still have a lot of family out there and they're all out you know raising cattle and doing the wild and again you know it's about my children now jim and i want them yeah. to have a bit of what i got to experience as a kid exactly you know? right exactly i say i'm i'm just still i'm still a kid but just wearing adult clothing basically <laughs> that's all it is and i know for you family is huge there we go la -dee da yeah. Isn't that a great shot of everybody? That's a great shot. <laughs> Family oh. is important to you. And oh, that, that, that is another great shot. Who do we have yeah. there in that shot? Tell us. So that, yeah. So there's my wife, Irina. Yeah. And, there, yeah. and there's my daughter, Cora, and my son, Jetson. It's a great my shot. Look at that. Beautiful great shot, family. too. That, that's Cora when she was a baby. But, I mean, she's still, she's only three. She's still a baby. There she is, a little mm. bit bigger really the cool Cora, that's what it's all about right no yeah, matter you know where you go in. and what you do and that's that's yeah. what it's all about very grounding as well you know um growing up on the cattle ranch in australia i'm sure that must have you know you mentioned jumping out of helicopters and just the raw ruggedness of it and the craziness mm -hmm. of it all pretty much prepared you for driving on the los angeles freeways and the <laughs> cattle ranch style that that is right oh, <laughs> it's pretty much uh, I was it's actually the same I, have a thing. Story, I have a story of driving on the 101 um when I was dude I, I must it must it might have been before I was on general hospital right before though I uh I had I totaled a car on the 101 it was and I know it was before 
because I was using a BlackBerry that had the keys on it. Oh, and yeah. Had, it was kind of like the beginning of smartphone. So you had to focus on that. Yeah. But dude, no, I had my laptop sitting on the on the seat beside me using MapQuest. <laughs> if you ever remember MapQuest. MapQuest. I'm using, right? I'm using MapQuest to, to find, I was trying to get to, I was going to play basketball at Beverly Hills uh, High School. I was in a, in a league and I'm driving and I look down to my laptop for a second and I, when i look up i'm like um it's like a shotgun going off i'm i'm inside another guy's car I'm like my whole front and the whole front of my this volkswagen jetta i had is like completely crumpled up around my feet oh, no. like we go down the side it was a crazy accident and I'm, that had to have been yeah because those it, are it usually amazing, solid like, vehicles but it was that amazing must have been... that i that, I, that we survived, survived it. in this it was me and this guy that I hit and uh, you know, he was an old gentleman and he, you know, he confessed that he was looking at his phone and he had, he, while he looked at his phone, he had braked and it was almost identically the same time he looked at his phone and I looked at my screen, like, you know, we collided and obviously I was in the wrong, I was behind, but it was, it was intense, but I'm glad he was, he was okay. And I was yeah. okay. The only injury I got was getting out of the car and I was running to see if he was okay. And I kicked my toe. I had, didn't have any shoes on yet. I, just had, <laughs> I was barefoot as I am most of the time. Yeah. But I had my basketball shoes in the passenger seat. I was barefoot. And then I kicked my toe on the edge of the freeway, you know, like on the jagged, oh. like, mm. kind yeah. of, yeah. you know, concrete on the edge of the freeway. And I yeah. like, ripped half my toenail off. That's the oh, only injury God. I got from it. So I got away. <laughs> it's it's pretty the, clean. The cars rolling down embankments, all of this craziness, but the most pain came from the toenail coming off the toe. Yeah. That's amazing. Whew, that is crazy so, stuff. You gotta be huh? careful, man. There's there's deadly snakes and spiders and crocodiles in Australia, but these freeways here, they'll get there's you. quite a few of the same <laughs> on the freeways. <laughs> Almost more. I'd actually rather be in the outback. Honestly, it's much safer. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We got a lot of culture. I want to show this. Um, look at this shot. How's being involved. Tell us about being involved oh, in this project. Cool. Yeah, huh? Oh, oh wait. Uh, for coming up for I, a forget about that shot. We'll come back to it. I think we've got here's a, here's something a baby. special here. Here's baby Cora. She asked me to make a honey sandwich for her. Hi, Cora. You want to wave? Say hi. Say hi to everyone. That's Cora. Hi, Cora. Baby. You're on TV right now. You're on the Jim Master Show live. Wow. What Say hi, Cora. Balls? You're, she... on, ah. you're on TV. Hi. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to have a little sleep? <laughs> I'll make you a honey sand in a little bit. Actually, mom's in there. She'll also make you one. But Is I she can practicing her ballerina routine right now with the uh, oh, baseball? Oh. Yeah, she actually loves, she loves being a ballerina. It's one of her favorite things right now. You actually called it because... When I tell her stories at the moment, I'm telling her these stories, and I, I'll start the story off like, "Once upon a time, there was a there was a unicorn," and she'll go, "Stop, Daddy! Can you please say, once upon a time, there was a ballerina?'" And I was like, "Yes, yeah, sorry, Cora." So she's all that's perfect. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. So she's got the little of that entertainment uh, juice inside her too, huh? Actually, yeah. Actually, I think Cora is going to be a little a little entertainer a little performer she loves singing she loves dancing um and she's got a great voice she's got a great little voice that i think i mean my mom you know uh was a famous country music singer and i and you know sometimes like pitch when with with children and singers that you can't really teach them tone and pitch sometimes they just have it and she they just like, have it right I'll sing, I'll sing a note and she'll be like right on pitch. Or I whistle, even if I whistle a note, she'll sing like a perfect pitch. So I think she's, I think we've got a little, a little singer. Actually, she's got this cute little raspy voice. So I think she could be a, she might rock it. Yeah. Okay. What is it? I'm just trying to stick the ball, 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 but I did it. Oh, you're trying to stick the ball? Yeah, you can go play baseball. These are all the seashells we got. We actually just got back from San Felipe, um, on the uh, on the northern the northern edge there of the uh, Sea of Cortez, just the start of Baja. And we went to this little fishing town, and we got a, some amazing seashells. There were some of them were huge, um, but we had a great time there. Huh? We were fishing and swimming, and oh yeah, I can oh, hear the ocean. That's cute, huh? 
and we were wow. surfing and you can't you can't uh, you can't script any of this right nathan nah, <laughs> you can't, you can't script, script any of this you hear the, you hear the ocean yeah you have, she can, right? she can hear the yeah. ocean. And a now baby. What, what does she uh what happens when she sees you on TV and everything? She get all excited. There's my daddy on TV on the screen. What's that like for her? Uh, yeah, you know it's it's been a little bit scary so far, just because the characters I've been playing have been pretty. They've been some pretty. They've been some pretty bad guys. But uh, Cora likes to say the Billy Eilish song. She likes to go, "Daddy, you're the bad guy." <laughs> <laughs> but uh i'm actually doing a voice of a, of a character daddy, 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 daddy. yes sweetheart I'm, the yeah, I'm, the bad guy. I'm actually doing a character in, a, in an amazon show called blippy and i'm playing um i'm playing grand shark and uh and i'm playing like this I'm playing this old shark in it with this very deep, gruff voice. My day, my name is Grand Shark. Grand I'm shark. Swimming in the ocean, and it's a show that these guys are producing. They're the guys that um, produce Morphle and uh, a couple of other really kind of well-known uh, kids, like cartoons, kids animations. Yeah. So you're gonna love that one. She'll, yeah. she'll like seeing Daddy's voice and playing this. Old Absolutely. Shark. That is so, really, really cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's loving it. She's loving it. <laughs> so how old is she now? She's going to be four in um, February. Wow. The time February. goes fast, doesn't it? The time goes <sighs> fast. So fast. Yeah. So fast, man. And you, you're actually, yeah, you must be a musician. I see a guitar back there. Yes. You see the guitar. We do yeah. piano. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, do you sing too? Have yep. you? Yeah. Yes. Yep. I cool. sing, sing and What's, play guitar. Uh, what do you, uh, what would be like in your iPod or your CD player or boombox or whatever? Because <laughs> I still have all those things. Yeah. What, would be, right? what is some of the music that you like, Nathan? I have, um, I like a variety of music and it changes, it goes in like phases and it all like at the moment I, I was listening to a lot of, uh, Ali Fakhture and he's a, he's a, um, he's a famous African kind of blues folk musician, Ali Fakhture. He's awesome. But you know, but then I swing and I listen to like, you know, Chris Stapleton and I love me some some Chris Stapleton and Zach Brown, you know, I have a bit of country vibe in me growing up in the, in the outback, oh, yeah. Australian outbacks, a little bit like American outbacks, like Texas. So I have right. a country vibe in me. Um, but, you know, I like jazz too. And, um, you know, I like classical and I also grew up doing some musicals. So I get into some kind of, you know, musical numbers and, and ballads and stuff. Um, so yeah, really, it really changes, you know, and, and yeah, some classical, some, some Italian, you know, yeah. So it, it, it goes in, it goes in phases. Uh, goes and then, I, and phase. then I love Australian music too. There's this great artist I love in Australia, uh, John Williamson. He's oh, really yeah. awesome. Like an Aussie, he's an Aussie storyteller. Um, yeah. Keith so, Urban, of course, Australian. Keith Urban's great. Yeah. Yes. Keith, Ur he, Keith Urban's really awesome. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. We were showing this picture earlier too. Tell us about this. What it was like being a part of this? Yeah, well, there you go, Keith Urban. Um, yeah. When I was on the set of, uh, oh no, that was on the set of Australia. So that was another movie with Hugh Jackman. But, uh, but uh, yeah, being on the set. That's of, right. That's uh, uh, that one. Yeah. That's that right. one. Being on the set of uh, uh, X Men was cool. I had a little, you know, I had a little kind of guest star, a little co star role in that with a few lines. But it was cool, you know. Working with Hugh is always a, a treat. He's such a great guy, you know. He. He remembered me, which is awesome because I was like a, you know, like a blink on his radar working on Australia. <laughs> and he's like, Nathan, what's up, man? How are you? That's cool. Humble guy, beautiful man. Uh, and then working on the set of Australia was was awesome. You know, yeah. Keith was around a lot, obviously, because of uh, his, his, his gorgeous wife working there. And, you know, Keith and Hugh would be playing guitars at night and singing yeah. and kind of kind of got to watch that and join in a little bit. Um, yeah. But that was You're fun. That was like my you're first. In this too. Oh yeah, winners and losers. That's a great uh, Aussie 
Aussie uh, sitcom, a great Aussie show. I kind of like, I kind of like explaining it. Like it's kind of like an Australian Sex in the City a little bit. Yeah, pretty right. similar, similar vibe. Um, great bunch of girls. Uh, you know, awesome playing a love interest to 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 one of the girls on that show. And um, yeah, that was fun. That's a fun one to watch. I think you can catch it on uh, it Amazon or some of the streaming networks. You can catch some that. Of the streaming you can, networks. You can yeah. catch that. <laughs> you can definitely catch this one on the streaming networks. I was on it yes. again. Little coaster, blink and you'll yeah. miss me, but. And we all look the same because they're all covered, in, you know, covered in schmutz and helmet. And that was cool. Another cool, cool job. Get to be a wow, soldier a without having to go to war. That was fun. That was a fun one that I that I, uh, you know, wrote and wrote and directed with a mate of mine. A short film called Nothing Girl Can Say. You probably catch. Now, how do you like YouTube. that? You know, writing and uh, you know, producing and being involved behind the scenes too. Like you mentioned early on, before taking on the full acting experience, you really got into the cinematography, which is really, I think, a cool thing because you have a real appreciation and understanding of everything that's going on around you and why it's all happening, as opposed to just making sure, you know, uh, that you're getting the scenes right dialogue wise and everything else as the actor, you're fully appreciative of, you know, why they're doing the camera angles this way and you know, the lighting and just the whole thing. Um, yeah. you enjoy the behind the scenes part of it too. I enjoy, I enjoy creating, you know, and, and that when you're behind the scenes, you're really creating the, the whole, the whole thing, you're creating the story, you know, and you're creating the tone and the, you're, do, you're doing everything and, and that's what is kind of all encompassing for me in my career is to to this point of being you know i started out as a musician and then learning how to act and then learning the cameras and then really it's like it's all the the facets of filmmaking kind of all you know rolled into one and that's where i'm heading to with my with my show that i'm that i'm writing and producing called far north um far north all, yeah it's all it's all coming ahead with that where i get to really showcase what i've what i've learned as an artist and i get to take it home to australia and i get to create and write a story um that's that's loosely based on a on a true story and i get to make this and i get to share my skills and knowledge with fellow like filmmakers and artists and then you know share this with with an audience and you know hopefully inspire and you know change some people's perspectives and entertain you know so uh do you have a target date when you hope that's wrapped and finished or you're just rolling with it and when you know it's done it's done yeah at the moment um you know this uh, this year i would like to like i've been working on it for several years um, you have, yeah. it's, it's a it's a six it's a six part mini series so it's really like a six hour movie. Um, and, you know, this year I'm, I'd say by the end of this month, I'll be finished, finally finished writing the whole thing. And this is going back and redrafting and making it to a point where I think, well, you know, I personally think it's unassailable and it's a, a brilliant show in the, in the, you know, in the light of kind of Deadwood or Godless or Peaky Blinders. It's got that kind of gritty, real Aussie feel. You know, it's this real like gritty Australian cowboy like Aussie movie that I don't think has ever really been seen before. Um, and you know, and like I said, like when I grew up in this period, like of Australia being in this, like we were almost stuck in like the the Wild West, you know. And now it's you know it's not like that anymore. And I just want to share that story with people. And you know, so I'm hoping, Jim. I'm hoping this year to to really get the ball rolling with it. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to get back to Australia, you know, get some, get the locations going and do some scouting, do some more research, get the, just get the team, get the team together. And, right. you know, I'd love to be shooting. I'd love to be shooting by, by, by summer in Australia, by the end of this year, I'd love to be starting shooting principal photography, at least on the pilot. And then, you know, hopefully have something out by, by early, you know, 2023, 20, have something, something on the books there to, to share. And if not shoot the whole thing and, you know, put it up for a, for a binge watch. Cause 
it's gonna be good, man. It's gonna be like honestly, yeah, it's, it's I think be, it's gonna yeah. be incredible, you know. So I'm super excited that's about exciting. it. Exciting. Congratulations on that too, because I know you know you're you're talking about really celebrating back home and, and the people and the culture and just everything. And and that must everybody there must be excited that you're sort of coming home to pay homage to where you grew up and the people and the atmosphere and the whole thing, huh? Yeah, man. Yeah, I'm really, really excited. I love America. I love the United States. But to be able to take the knowledge that I've got here back back home is just, you know, because we have the industry that you have here, you know, and it's yeah. uh, obviously a lot of great stuff is being shot in Australia. But, you know, to be able to be able to share that. There you go. You know, is, <laughs> She's right. To to Spot on. That is, you know, I really, I really can't wait to get back there and start, start crafting this, uh, you know. An, oh. another another <laughs> she's your manager as well honey let's go come on we've got a gig in 10 minutes got a gig. <laughs> cutie yeah. cutie cutie um here's another one people may remember you of course hawaii 5 what was it like being a part of that nathan uh, that franchise of course going all the way back to the days of jack lord in the 70s um, right yeah tell us about being a part of that very cool yeah, that was awesome you know my a good friend of mine alex o'loughlin who i'm sure you guys know who he is you know he's the star and the producer director of the show mr mr steve mcgarrett but um yeah al you know working with al was awesome you know he directed the episode and um he was uh yeah we, I, I wasn't at drama school with him but i met him in sydney like you know i don't know 17 years ago and we kind of always stayed in touch and yeah and uh yeah when i auditioned for this show you know he saw my tape and loved it and forwarded it to the producers and they put in a good word and loved it too and had me on and it was that was awesome too you know and again like it's a small role like you know i'm a guest star but, but still the yeah the feedback i got on it was like you know it was, I was so humbling you know they yeah. were like dude you were you know for someone only had a you know a few scenes in the show they were like you stole the show you know you you were so incredible you you know you that's what i think there's no small you know, as a famous quote um is there's no small roles you know only small actors so there's every role right. you get, whether it's you know 50 words or 5,000 words it's like i'm gonna i'm gonna give them my you know 100 and i'm gonna a million percent you know go all in or go home you know it's like i want to give the audience what they deserve you know and it does it's also doing it for myself you know doing exactly it, you know you didn't across. swim across the ocean from australia to just play around you mean business right right <laughs> let's get to work exactly. let's get to work <laughs> exactly, exactly how'd you avoid man. the sharks when you swam across you, you swam across right uh <laughs> right i swam yeah well look you know luckily like i grew up with all those pirates out there so i had them most of the you know i had some pirates escorting me and they you probably uh, jumped onto a shark and the shark yeah, took did they have they have harpoons you know we harpoon the shark and then we just ride them, ride them in. hang so. on to that fin <laughs> <laughs> no i love i love animals i love sharks i love animals oh, yeah. beautiful creatures i would never do that Jim. yeah no 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 here's yeah. another great one. Ah, oh, that's a there's awesome there's an awesome tell us about on, yeah. this one for the audience who might be saying oh what's this one about i gotta check that out along the bed's edge sitting actually i was just in the office today writing with the writer of this the writer and director of this series charles dalton benson who's a great friend of mine um and we're actually riding far north together, me and me and Charles. And uh, yeah, he wrote this. I think he wrote this back in when he was in high school in Casper, Wyoming. I went during school, and he wrote this. And then uh, when we when he came out to LA, he was working for Warner Brothers here as a as a sound like a studio engineer. Yeah. Um, he was uh, he was here, and he pulled the script out. And we played in a band called the Sugar. Charlie, me and Charlie played in this band called the, this kind of hillbilly rock band called the, yeah. the sugar and anyway charlie yeah he'd wrote this film and he said yeah let's let's pull it get out and have a read of it and we had to change it a little bit and massaged it together and then we uh, then we shot it and it was awesome you know and, and talk about pulling something together with like a shoestring budget i mean we had you know like a hundred or so extras of this that we pulled together for this basketball game and you should watch it it's really cool it's really cool to see what you can do i think it's on uh, amazon prime right i think is where they can see yeah. it 
Yeah, I think it's on Prime. Um, Where'd you film it? Uh, we shot it all in LA. Um, it's all in LA then. Yeah. All in LA, and yeah, we we used a, a basketball stadium out here. I think it was A E Stell, one of the middle school stadiums. Yeah. They let us shoot, and we got a. It was crazy. Like we put on Facebook and Craigslist, and uh, you know, we, on IMDb. Probably put on a. You know, we're saying we're shooting this cool uh, basketball scene and dude, just the turnout like people just came out and you know like it, it was at least 100 people which in a camera you can make look like you which know like you 500 can. to more you can make look like you can cheat it to make look like there's a lot more people than there are. um so that was cool really humbling to to have people come out and support us and the films it's i think it's almost 30 minutes too it's a it's a decent uh it's a decent half hour of of short film um but it's it's pretty uh it's pretty intense. It's pretty heavy. Yeah. It's pretty like it's a film about like a struggling, you know, a struggling young, young uh, family trying to survive in a in a uh, in a tough in a tough world. Um, yeah, yeah, it's cool. That was kind of the first short um, I ever made. So that's that cool. Definitely. Congratulations that's cool. on that too. Like I said, you got the background behind the scenes too, which I think is a real advantage for you really understanding, appreciating, you know, all aspects of, of what's happening around you here. Speaking of what's happening around you, this is a cool shot. Tell us about this. I think you were excited to just be back in action. You know, <laughs> I was with everything. excited to be back in action. You know, actually yeah. this photo, I'm, I was the, uh, I was the COVID compliance officer on this photo in this photo. Were you really? Yeah. You do have that expression. <laughs> I do so, have that expression. So I was, I was making sure people were safe and, uh, you know, that was a, that was a job that I, I have a, I have a company, a, a cleaning company that I started yeah. many years ago on the side. That's been a kind of lucrative, uh, passive income for me. And, uh, I just went out to the set one day with the crew just to see that everything was running smoothly, and uh, I got to, I got to see him. They were shooting a commercial for a, um, I think it was for the army. They were shooting, a, as you could see, the set. And uh, one of the guys gave me a cool, cool, um, cool shirt from the army. There, one of the army guys. Cool. Um, one of the marines. So that yeah. was that was cool. That was a cool day. There's a, there's a bit of a Hawaii Five O. Yeah. In a, in a really badass. cool. Cool shot. A, now, was, there, bad, was this bank robber. was that filmed in Hawaii or LA yeah. to look like? Yeah, yeah, like yeah. That was that was uh, that was Hawaii. We shot that at a, I think it was at an actual bank um, where the where the bank robbery went down. It was a very uh, kind of uh, kind of a la kind of heat. I don't know if you know the movie Heat. Kind of yeah. Oh yeah. Kind of a, it was kind of a cool take on Heat. Was it for that yeah. episode? They, I feel like they channeled that that movie for that episode, which is really cool. I mean, that was fun. What about stage, like uh, Broadway, theater, things of that nature as well? Uh, is that something that you're toying with as well? Um, you know, I kind of I kind of started in the here's one of the puppies. I kind of started in um uh in uh, what do we have there? This is Goldie. <laughs> Goldie, is, hey this Goldie. Is Goldie. It's uh, starting to get a little it. cold out here as the sun drops. So I was like, I was, I'm going to trying to get cold a little bit of body warmth here. <laughs> well, yeah. So what's cold. what's what would cold be cold? Ish. Yeah. What would be? I mean, I don't know. Be... Today was probably like 66, you know, and I'm walking around with, with no t-shirt on. Mm. But uh, that is got, awful. It, 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 like, <laughs> that is awful. Around, no, no, the t-shirt. No t-shirt at the beach, swimming in the ocean. 60 degrees, but, uh, 70 degree weather. Yeah, I don't know. It probably drop down in the 40s in the night. But you I, want to trade here in the Northeast? It's 31 degrees and we got a ooh. snowstorm coming tomorrow. You want to trade or you will suddenly the 68 seems like very oh balmy, doesn't it? <laughs> Man, I grew up in the outback in like what 120, 120 was just a normal day, you know? Yeah. <laughs> we, uh, we actually have some video here that we can show and maybe you can take us through it. We have the, because of copyright, of course, we have the sound paused, but maybe you can take us through what we're seeing, like some of the scenes, because I think this is from like the demo reel type thing. Here's a shot here. That was from Hawaii Five O. That's a cool one. There you go. First scene is like, look at this with Michael Ironside. Remember who you acting yes. Michael Ironside. I mean, getting to act with someone who's won an Oscar. That's thank you. Cool. Exactly. Um, yeah. Here's a scene acting with Aaron Paul. 
another, you know, another legend, legendary young actor. Um, this is the Pacific. See how we all look the same? You're like, who's who? Right. <laughs> You're like, this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Um, again, like a tiny little yeah. role, but, but cool. Oh, really, really General cool, hospital. huh? This and is then, probably high you know, again. General Hospital That's stuff. And then here's Casual working with Tommy there. He's cool. That's Look, at see the crowd right there. Now, that was our yeah. short film. See all the people in that crowd? Yeah. That short film that we shot for nothing. Here's the Australian Winners and Losers oh, Sex in the City show. A bit of action, a bit of fire. Oh, I wish I was in that fire right now. It's kind of getting out here. <laughs> <laughs> There's my... There's a, there's, that's a little, little highlight reel. Yes, yeah. nice, huh? When you look back and you're like, wow, I forgot about it. I did that, I did that, I did that. Are there roles that are out there that you would love to have? Do you see, you know, other types of roles, a, a departure maybe from anything that you're doing now in terms of character, um, format, comedy, sitcom? I mean, you're really probably tackle at all if it yeah. was presented to you you know i'm really fortunate that you know to to kind of be the type of actor that is a little bit of a chameleon like i feel like i can that i can tackle some comedy you know i haven't haven't really had a huge chance to get much into it but i mean winners and losers was was i guess dramedy um you know kind of more leaning towards the comedy side so i guess you know, i i did get to do that um, but yeah, well, I'd love to do some comedy. Um, at the moment, I'm just having so much fun in these films because um, they're just—I don't know—they've just been so interesting to explore. You know, I'm such a—I'm yeah. such a nice guy in real life. You know, um, yeah. getting to play play a villain is, is is fun because I don't get to do that in real life, and and I get mm -hmm. to I get to imagine all these different scenarios, and it just—you know—I yeah. can just get off on it. You know, it's cool. Yeah. Um, so definitely, I think my sink my teeth into some old villains would be great you know i definitely yeah. I, I definitely want to have more fun with that and i'm now you know coming to the age where i'm where i'm you know when i'm gonna be a little more you know picky and choosy with what i do you know i don't have to say yes to everything you know it's not like i i need need the work so i can kind of you know, be a little bit more selective which is fun um yeah so yeah it just depends on the script and again you know writing my own stuff and and having having this show, you know, be really my main focus. You know, I, I'm not sure yet whether I'm going to be a character in the show yet. I'm kind of, uh, you know, maybe, you know, maybe a little selfless and give the roles to the people who, who do the best job at the auditions and, um, you know, really really kind of try to bring some other people, you know, give them some time to to shine. You know, I'd kind of like that too. So right. I think being a, taking of a directorial approach and producer approach would be cool too. But uh, but hey, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I've had some really awesome auditions, auditions, you know, kind of lately. And fingers crossed, some of them have been, yeah, awesome. How's awesome, it been? Really uh, fantastic shows. Oh, absolutely. How's it been? You know, working through this crazy pandemic, global pandemic that we've all gone through. We've all had to learn. You know, I, I keep saying I hope we rise from the ashes of all this more kinder, more empathetic, more unified, less divisive. And we we work together and we instead of everybody talking, we take time to to really listen and collaborate. How have you been getting through it? What are some of the things that you've uh, maybe learned about yourself? Some of those teachable moments along the way during this really, I, I say, a time we've all experienced that only. George Lucas, Steven Spielberg, Stephen King, or Rod Serling could have ever scripted. Right? Dude, yeah, it's, so, it's been so crazy. And, you know, it's, I, I've had, during this, this, this pandemic, I've, I've honestly had a real spiritual awakening, you know, and it's been an amazing transformation. It's been an amazing transformation just in life and in, in, kind of what you're touching on jim like about listening to people and listening listening to to the world you know like listening to what's going on out there and and you know getting involved and even if it's on the littlest the littlest of scale you know and you got to start somewhere you know and it's for me it's just getting out there and talking to people and helping them 
you know, like talking to a stranger, which I never really would have done before. I was kind of a little bit guarded, you know, the old Nathan and getting out there and letting my guard down and actually taking another person in, you know, like listening to them and, you know, at someone who might have been before my, what I considered someone I didn't like or not an enemy, but like someone who I didn't like and didn't really want anything to do with. I was like, you know what, I'm going to drop my guard and talk to this person and see what's going on with them. And when you do that, you just realize that, you know, everything just disappears, the, the race, the culture, the, all of it just goes away. And you're like, it's just a beautiful human being that's going through the same shit that I'm going through. Right. And we're all going through. And then They're we join on this, you know, there's somehow this like, this kind of togetherness that's somehow found through through listening and through understanding this person that that's beautiful, you know, and then you're able to move forward and get through these, these weird, you know, like unforeseen times together. Yeah. Yeah. Has it, has it done anything in terms of your work, uh, a different perspective on life, different perspective on projects or anything along those lines? I know a lot of people, you know, have been saying that they've been reassessing their lives. They've been, I mean, there's this great resignation where you see a lot of people leaving their jobs and they're doing all these different things now that really inspire them. Has any of this uh, come into your world as far as, you know, you really have this desire to work on projects that make people think and feel and they're inspired and maybe they're lifted as well, whether they're projects that you get hired for or that you even create yourself. Yeah, no, def definitely, Jim. I mean, it's, you know, it's really, I'm going to go a little bit off your question, but then I'll come back to it. It's a little bit, you know, with my, in terms of my family, what happened during the pandemic was like brought my family so close together where, where before we were like strangers living in a house where we're all off working and hustling and trying to, trying to get somewhere right trying to trying to get some level of success to feel like we made a purpose or we have a purpose or there's this whole life thing has some kind of meaning but right in the end it's like it doesn't mean anything and and what matters is just being here and just being alive and that that then going into my work was like which seemed to have worked because once I come out of this headspace that I was in, I started like looking again because I just, I stopped caring. And in the, in the, I mean that in the best possible way. Like I just stopped caring about what other people think of me. You know, I don't care. I don't care what, what people think about my hair, how I look, how I, you know, what, you know, if I'm, you know, too big or too small or too, like I just stopped caring about people's judgment that they may have had on me as a person when I'm doing these performances, I was just like, I don't, you know, yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't, I don't get, I don't I'm get, with you on that. That, you know? that, that happened to me too. Yeah. Did that's it? um, yeah. In, in a great way. Right. In a great way. And it's amazing how that sort of happened, you know, where you're just sort of like, Hey, you know, you're doing your thing. You're, you're, you're Nathan and you're, you're, you know, you're living your bliss and you're authentic and you're, you know, yeah it's the real deal. And, uh, you know, because I think a lot of times when we're coming out of the gate, coming right out of school, coming right out when there aren't pandemics, you know, that aim, you know, we want to please, we want to, you know, do excellent work. That's always going to be what we want to do, but you sort of then say, Hey, I want to do things that also you know, serve me and, and please me. And, uh, whatever I'm thinking or saying or doing, that's the authentic me. When we first come out of school or come out of the gate, it's all about, you know, the hustle and, and pleasing the entire world and making sure everybody's happy and everything is, you know, perfect and all of this. And then you realize through pandemics and other things in life that there are other things that are important and your own personal happiness and contentment and satisfaction is extremely important and a healthy thing because it just enhances your work, not just the work ethic, but the um, you're a much better 
actor, performer, any of us in any of these roles, because now we have the this depth of being in touch with what we need and want as much as what the world says we should be doing and wanting and needing, right? Yeah, and knowing who you are, when it all comes down to it, when you when you can understand like who you are as a person, when you when you can kind of figure it out, this is the person I am. I'm not trying to be anyone else anymore. Just me. That's kind of what happened to me. I'm like, I'm just gonna give them me, you know. And even if it's a crazy, weird, you know, villain version of me, I'm giving them this authentic part of myself that I feel like before I might have been a little bit, you know. I don't know. I was just kind of phoning it in or I was playing, I was playing out. You held back a little bit, else, you think? Was, like you held back just a little. Yeah. And now, I was holding now back. It's... Like a, yeah. It was like safe. Yeah. I was playing safe. Right. I was playing safe. like, I was playing what I thought they wanted to see. They wanted you know? to see what they, right. what they wanted. And I'm like, now I don't, I don't honestly. And again, in the best possible ways, I don't care what, what they want. Cause I'm going to give them something that, is totally beautiful and unique and authentic in, you know, in like grounded in integrity that they're going to go, Holy shit. That's, that's what we want. That's, you know, that's, like they're going to go, yeah. I thought I wanted that, but that's actually right. what I want. You know, right. I think that's advice for everyone. Give them yourself, give them your, you know, that energy is that's the best, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's absolutely. Real. Absolutely. What what are some other exciting things that you have coming up? I know NCIS on uh, CBS, NCIS Los Angeles. Guy right there on your screen, he's going to be on it. Look for him on CBS. Congratulations again on that. What else is coming up? You mentioned Far North. There, you got your hands in a lot of different things all at once, uh, Nathan, like we do in these crazy industries <laughs> we're in. <laughs> I do have my hands in a lot of different things. And uh yeah, I'm just excited. I'm excited for 2022. Actually, um, uh, you know, I'm planning on, well, we're potentially planning on moving back to Australia this year. So that's that could be exciting. Um, don't know yet. You know, I seem to always book a flight. And then, you know, when you book a flight, you book something real big, you know, it tends to be yeah. Yeah. The, the thing that happens. And I don't know yeah. what that is. It might be like a fresh thing. Maybe when you book something, you feel like you're going somewhere. And then and your you... phone rings and says, we need you uh, then, sorry, to shoot something here. in Wyoming. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm just excited, man. I'm just excited to keep exploring through myself and my children's eyes, getting to be a child again through their eyes. Like you said, Jim, you know, yeah. just never grow up, man. You know, never yeah. grow up. It's like, stay young have fun and and yeah like take people in man you know listen to them you know listen to what's going on out there and yeah be a part, you know be a part of your society and be a part of the be a part of the world you know be a part of nature be a part of the city be whatever you're into you get into it exactly right exactly right that's really really cool and again you know you're you're a husband and a father and that's a whole other those are the best roles you could ever have in life right yeah yeah that's my slogan man like it's I'm, you know I've, I've played a lot I've, I've had been blessed to to have the opportunity to play many awesome fun roles as an actor but you know the best role i'll ever play is being a father yeah it's the best yeah. it's, it's absolutely fun. beautiful now, what, what are some things you've learned along the way that have surprised you about the industry? Um, when you came in, like you said, in your early 20s, you've been doing it for a while now, you know, you sort of have your thoughts about what Hollywood is like, you know, streets paved in gold, coming to America, all of this. What were some things that surprised you along the way? Um. I guess that it's, I guess that it's kind of, maybe that it's not all cracked up what it's, what's the saying? It's not cracked up what it's, what it's, uh, it's not all cracked up to what, to, yeah, what I know what you mean. Yeah. It's, it's not like the build up, the build up, yeah. the high of it, you know, it's not all like, you got to really work hard. For, the opportunities like for example, are there, but you got to work hard. Yeah, yeah. For example, yeah, it's just work. At the end yeah. of the day, it's like work. You know, people are like, oh, it's glamorous. It's, you know, it's this like, like tinsel town. It's Hollywood. It's all that. It's and then at the end of the day, you get the job and you got to get up in the morning and go to work and learn a bunch of lines and, you know, like, 
done set and work and do it again the next day and the next day yeah. and the next day and by the end of it you're exhausted and you're like yeah. damn is this really what i want to do this with what, my life where's, where's the limo like, and the champagne and uh, the tuxedo yeah <laughs> so i guess it's like a you know it's like the you got to be careful what you wish for because yeah. you're gonna get it you know and when you get it like you better be ready you know because it's it's yeah it's not going to be as easy that you know but it was all cracked up to be and, and just you know and in saying that then then just find the joy in it find the struggle in it find the pain find the happiness find the find all those different you know things that you find in your in your, in your work you know? i don't know about you but the lighting right now is fantastic on your it's end. Getting, is better. It? <laughs> it's getting better. The golden hour is coming. In. This light here that we that we decided to put up, Jim and I, is uh, now it's working for us. <laughs> Who to say? You you started yeah. out in a dark cave and now you're on cloud nine, right. <laughs> all in the same hour. show. That's it. So uh, so life is good. Uh, you're 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 happy. Good things are happening. You love what you do. You work really hard at it, and uh, you know lots to come down the pike, which is really exciting. Again, I'm very happy for you because uh, you know I've followed your work, and you're you're terrific at what you do. And there's a lot of people who really enjoy your work as well, and they were excited you were coming on. The Gym Master Show live tonight, and uh, I hope the show met whatever expectations you had, Nathan, and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you. Thanks, Jim. Look, I had no expectations, mate. You were awesome. Um, my only regret is that you know I'd love to learn a lot more about you. I feel like I did all talking, and you know, talking about that listening, that listening thing. Um, yeah, you know, I feel like you're a, you know, I feel like you're a great person, and and what you're doing here is is really nice you know it's a really nice thing and uh yeah keep doing it man i'm gonna keep i'm gonna stay tuned and keep watching your your stuff and keep learning more about you and you know together we'll we'll get there through the sickness and health and through yeah the good times and the bad and all of it you know maybe we'll take the show on the road to australia when you're there we'll do an on location uh, episode go. take us there around right <laughs> why not i'd love to well, spread the word about our series. I really appreciate it. We say we do a lot of light, love, and levity here, and we don't just do interviews. It's like a full entertainment lifestyle variety talk show series, something old school with a modern vibe. And it was really awesome having you on. i just show you a couple of the comments coming in here. Maureen from Arizona says, Nathan, thank you for being here this evening. Keep your awesome self. Keep being your awesome Aww. self. May your star continue to shine brightly. That's Maureen in Arizona. Thanks Sherry Larson know. in Kansas, USA says, thank you, Nathan, for joining us. Good luck in your future endeavors. Thank Kathleen you, in Sherry. New York City, thank you for being here, Nathan. Uh, Merlin thank in you. Canada wants to know, do you still play music? Do you still, still get a chance music. to Love it. Still? Play every day. I got, I got instruments all through my house. I got do you really? and, and didgeridoos <sighs> and ukuleles, and I got a drum kit and bongos and djembes, and I got everything. And it's oh, all free cool. game for my children, even though some of those instruments are worth a lot of money. Yes. I let them play with them and do whatever they want because that's why not? You know, that's what it's all about. Not enjoy. Absolutely. So. Juanita says, Thank you, Nathan, for spending time with us. Good luck with all the upcoming projects. That's Jane's wonderful. watching in Sweden. She says, uh, Thank you, Nathan, for joining us tonight. Thanks, Jim, for having him on. Absolutely. And, uh, of course, uh, your website is uh, Nathan with an I, butler.com. And there's a little bit of a backstory. Is it because of the spelling of your brother's name or something, why you have the I in Nathan or yeah. something like that? Again, yeah, I did some right. research. <laughs> you do some, you do, you're a good researcher. Smart man. Yeah, because my brother's name is Colin, so C-O-L-I-N. Uh, and my mom wanted to have the I, the Nathan, and the Colin look the same her being the, the kind of very creative, beautiful person that she is. Um, yeah. Valley, Valley Butler. I'm sure she's tuning in. Love oh, that's mom. fantastic. Hello. Uh, Hello. Mom. Yeah. Um, yeah. I bet she's proud. I bet the family 
back home in Australia, you know, to know that you took those risks and you moved to, you know, a whole other country and there you are in your early twenties, I'm sure they were concerned. They were worried and, but, you know, rooting you on and to see the success and to see everything that's happening in your life, I'm sure they're, they're content and proud. Sometimes not a lot of people, there are situations where the family isn't around to see the successes um, right. And you you have the blessing of having that, and I'm sure they must be incredibly proud, huh? They are, Jim. Look, I have a beautiful family, and I'm incredibly proud of them. You know, my my mom, Valley, and and uh, my sister, Clesty, my other sister, Clest, uh, Chloe, and my brother, Colin. You know, I'm proud of them all. And my dad, you know, who passed away a few years back, Kerry. Um, you know, he's he was always proud, and he got to just all do some amazing things and got to see um, right yeah 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 man that's so proud that's of them the... and can't wait to see him again you know it's been a pretty tricky time yeah uh, we're gonna we're gonna get back we're gonna get back yeah, soon it. and we'll see yeah. him soon everybody's got to be together exactly like we were saying we just kind of came back from florida after almost two years of not seeing relatives that are there that's yeah. a long time, you know, uh, especially if there are some relatives that are a little bit older, you know, you want to get there, you want to be with them. Um, really, really important. Uh, Mary Bishop, speaking of Florida, she's watching in Southern Florida. She says, fun conversation. Good luck in your future endeavors. Nathan, yeah, Merlin in Ontario says, thank you, Nathan, for being here. Stay safe. Thanks, Marilyn. Lo good stuff here. A lot of good people watching our series. Uh, this was awesome, my friend. I wish you continued success. Let's stay in touch. We, As I always say here on the show, we will keep the porch light on for you. You're welcome back anytime. And uh, spread the word about our series. We'd love that. If you know of other folks who think like to pop on. And uh, I hope uh, we get a chance to uh, break bread in person. One of these things, whether you're on the East Coast or I'm there on the West yeah. Coast or what have you, that would be awesome. That would be awesome, Jim. Thanks so much, man. I really appreciate you. Thanks, mate. I really appreciate it. And yeah. See you soon. I'm sure that'll be cool to have be on again. You sure you want to give up that nice lighting you got? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? We Why didn't not? change it up. <laughs> That's it. All right, Nathan, you're the best. You be well, my friend, and good luck. And we'll look for you on NCIS uh, on CBS Los Angeles this Sunday. NCIS Los Angeles. There Thanks he is. Thanks for tuning in. See you, Jim. Cheers, See you, my Jim. friend. All right. The best, huh? Isn't that really cool? Really enjoyed having him on the show. And he is going to be on NCIS Los Angeles this Sunday. Again, that's for those of you who are watching live. There it is. There's the graphic for you. NCIS Los Angeles. And again, he was on Hawaii Five O and General Hospital. There he is from General Hospital. Some other cool shots there too. I believe this uh, photo is courtesy of uh, Daytime Confidential. We take them as well. Some other cool shots of various shows and scenes. This is from NCIS. So these are these are kind of exclusive that you're seeing here. These shots from filming that episode of NCIS. There he is with LL Cool J. If you missed that earlier, some other great shots. Another one. Yeah, that's from that as well. And then we showed these earlier. Like I always say, nothing tops family, right? Nothing tops family. And uh, some other cool shots along the way, other productions. And there's many, many more. We just showed a few of them. You know, we try to show not just one thing. We try to show the breadth or scope. So that way they really get a good feel of... Uh, who the guest is, who you are, who I am, all of us together. Uh, that's what it's about, all of us together. This is really awesome. Really, really, really loved having him on the show and having all of you with us as well, gang. This was really fantastic. I want to let you know, amazing guests are really coming left and right here as they have been tomorrow from Judge Judy, you know, the legendary courtroom show. For 25 years, the bailiff, Bird, he's going to be here, Petri Hawkins Bird, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. He is also an actor. 
his lovely wife, Makita Bond-Bird, who was the Emmy-winning producer of Judge Judy for some 25 years, is also going to be here as well. We're really looking forward to that. That's uh, Friday night, 8 p.m., uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. If you miss it or you're watching this uh, six months from now, just search for it in our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV, and you'll see it there. Saturday afternoon, we're excited. J. Randy Tarabelli is going to be with us. He's an award-winning journalist, celebrity biographer, uh, biographer that is. And he uh, has written uh, acclaimed biographies on the Kennedy family, on the Hiltons, on Beyonce, Michael Jackson, Diana Ross, uh, you name it. Uh, and we're and Marilyn Monroe, of course, as well. He's with us on Saturday afternoon at 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific, then everybody's excited. The Harp Twins are going to be with us on Sunday. Camille and Kennerly Kitt, the very, very popular Nordic Celtic Harp duo. They are twins. They are extraordinarily talented. We worked on a PBS television special together. Uh, this is their return visit to the Gym Masters show live. They're all excited. They're going to be here this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. They're going to play live as well this Sunday at 3 p.m. Eastern. They are mega stars on social media as well, and they're just incredibly talented. Uh, Camille and Kennelly, twin sisters, extraordinary harpists. They play every kind of harp you can think of, all genres of music. It's extraordinary, and they're hilarious, too. They're very witty and love, love them. They're coming on Sunday, a special Sunday episode of the Gym Master Show Live. And then we have Esther Turblanche. She is a well-known South African actress uh, who's made her home here in the United States. You may remember she was on All My Children. She was on Spin City. She was also in A Goalie Place of Gold and a lot of other series in Africa, as well as in the United States. Esta, this is a rare interview. She doesn't really do a lot of interviews. Um, and again, we some people say interview. I like to say conversation. An interview is ask a question, answer it. Ask a question, answer it. Tell us about your new book, out. This is a whole other feel here. We like to really have conversations with this part of our series, which is our Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series. Esta is going to be with us. Coming in February, my fantastic friend, David Gear is gonna be here, award-winning actor, film producer extraordinaire. He's actually in Hollywood right now on set. Uh, he was also Frank Meltzer in the series Gossip Girl. I've known him for years. He's actually a personal friend. He's gonna be joining us in February. And just a lot more. It's incredible the guests we have coming up for all of you. We're working really, really, really hard behind the scenes. Um, great show, Kathleen Walker says. Um, not chatty today. No problem. As long as you're there watching Kathleen, that is perfectly fine. Just love having you here. Um, and she's Kathleen's in New York City. Maureen is in Arizona. What a great show this was. It was a lot of fun getting to know more about Nathan. Thanks, Jim, for leading such an interesting conversation. My pleasure, as always. And um, Juanita says, another great episode. Nathan is such a nice guy. Absolutely. Uh, new friends made here, as always. And, uh, and that's what happens. We become friends with all the guests. If I'm not already a friend or they're a friend of mine, we become that, which is really cool. It happens in my professional work too, and I love it. Uh, Sherry says, thank you, Jim. So happy to be, to have you and the Lovities back. Miss the conversations with you and your guests and the Lovities. Sherry Larson there in Kansas. So we're we're very happy to have you here. Master's Mantra shirt. I posted this on Facebook. This was a family gift. One of the gifts for Christmas. Love it because you guys that follow me on Facebook or Instagram, Twitter at Jim Masters TV know for years I've been posting these inspirational observations of life and uh, mantras called Masters Mantra. And I was very surprised when I opened up one of the packages when we were in Florida with the family and they had this custom made and they ordered it, special order, the family. And, uh, and this was great. My sister and brother-in-law and family uh, got this for me for Christmas. 
Master's Mantra. There's the shirt. You guys have been talking about it. I love this shirt. Uh, we're putting together Lovity shirts too and hats. I just got the, finally, finally, finally got all of the graphics we need to be able to now do the shirts and the mugs and the hats and everything you guys have been asking for. But this really, this, I love this shirt and uh, really, really beautiful. Juanita, very familiar with Esta. So you're going to love that shirt, uh, show on Monday which is going to be great. And uh, thanks, gang. You guys are the best. We appreciate it. This is your host, Jim Masters. Uh, help us grow. Share the levity. Tell everybody you know about the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show Series, which is right here on our YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Uh, of course, uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a like. Click like on the actual YouTube channel channel and uh, the episode, you see a little uh, thumbs up button there on the episode. While you're watching right now on YouTube, you see a little thumbs up icon, click that and leave a comment on the channel underneath this episode and all the episodes that you enjoy. That really helps us big time. We really appreciate it, but it does help us big time. And also don't forget, if you haven't subscribed, if you want to be able to comment when the shows are live or you just want to let us know how much you enjoy the Gym Master Show Live series, Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, be sure and subscribe to the YouTube channel, which is what you're watching right now. We would love it. And be sure and click the notification bell so you never miss any of the episodes. Not only do we have this series, but we started a, an On Location on the Road series too, which you can see on our YouTube channel, taking you on mini episodes to special places and adventures and historic places as well. And of course, we've got YouTube Shorts and the Master's Mantra series and so much more. Thank you, Kathleen. And uh, Maureen says, hooray for Lovity shirts, something to wear proudly. I appreciate that. And they're coming soon. Good night, all. Hope everyone is staying warm and safe, Jim. I sent the snow your way. I know. I asked Sherry Larson last night if she could keep some of that snow in Kansas, and she said no. So I think it's no snow and no pickled herring for you. You don't like pickled herring either <laughs> and no snow. So, Hey, Kathleen, it looks like we got the snow headed our way tomorrow. It's no, so actually tonight, I believe it starts tonight. It's about 8 30 PM Eastern here right now. So we've got a snowstorm, a little bit of a snowy day tomorrow for all of us uh, here in the Northeastern United States night to Merlin there in Canada and Ontario. And again, a pleasure having our special guest, actor Nathan Butler, here on the Gym Masters Show Live. Check him out on NCIS Los Angeles. Uh, stay with us for more great episodes coming up. And if you haven't seen the on-location segments, uh, check those out. We had a ball putting those together for you on our YouTube channel. We'll have more of those on-location episodes of our show, too. I'm going to take you guys to more special places. Good night, everyone. We had a lovely summer's day with some rain to end it off. That's right. You're on the flip side of the earth, South Africa there. So everything is, you know, we're going, we're in winter and you're in, you're in your summer. All right, gang, we love you all. We're going to sign off and sign out. Thanks for being with us. As we always say, when we remember to do it, don't forget to smile. Don't forget to share the lovity. Find your Zen place. Mine, of course, loving family and friends in the ocean. And my career in television, radio, stage, and film over the years I love as well. Those are some of my Zen places. And of course, being here with all of you on the Jim Masters Show, live entertainment lifestyle talk show series. Jane in Sweden, oh, they're all saying goodnight to each other. All the loveties, they all say goodnight. It's like an episode of the Waltons. Goodnight, John Boy. Goodnight. It's kind of cool. A lot of shows don't do that, but we do it here. Lovely Central here. Good night, everybody from Jean in Sweden. Everybody's saying good night, see? Have a good night, my friends. Sweet be your dreams from Maureen. And to all of you, your host here, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, we'll be back tomorrow with the bailiff from Judge Judy. He's also a great actor, too. Uh, Petri Hawkins Bird is going to be with us. And you've seen him for over 25 years on the Judge Judy courtroom series. We're going to talk about what it was like, you know, being on the show and all the other things he's done, projects he's working on. And his lovely wife, um, Makita, is going to be here as well. Um, and she's got a very inspiring story because she's had a battle with cancer. She's an Emmy winning producer, produced the Judge Judy series. The two of them 
are going to be with us tomorrow, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, live, another very, very special show. You're all the best, Kathleen, as are you. Sending you some lovity as well from everybody here at the Gym Master Show Live and from me personally, because uh, we've known each other for a long time. All right, gang, we're going to sign out. I know I say that 15 times before we actually do. This was a fun show, and uh, having you here makes it extra special. You guys uh, go out and play. We'll see you on the next one. And thanks for being with us on this episode of the Gym Master Show Live. We'll see you again soon. Cheers.